Patreon, I want to give a quick shout out to Thor Matson. This is a request that he made about submitting people from the inside wrist ride or what people call the Dagestan handcuffs. So Thor Matson has been supporting me on Patreon. So if you want to get an answer one of your questions or to help you out with a particular technique, you got to become a Patreon member. You can't, you can't just be on YouTube like do this. Occasionally I'll do it, you know, when I'm feeling jolly, but not all the time. All right, I can't be doing that because at that point I'll just be doing thousands of videos. Um, I was gonna say something. Happy holidays to everybody. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! This is a Christmas edition. Thor Madsen, subscribe. So against the wall, I'm gonna have Tony here. Uh, inside wrist ride position, where my training partner is down and I have his wrist control. So we're not gonna talk about lacing the legs because that's a, a myth that people don't realize. They think when I get to the inside wrist, I have to lace the legs. You don't have to lace the legs. I can get inside wrist position. I can step over my training partner's one leg, depending on the formation of his legs. If his legs are a little more narrow, I can step over the hips. But either way, I'm gonna step over his body. I'm gonna keep my hips pinned on his hips and I go to my inside wrist ride or Dagestani handcuffs. What I'm gonna do from this position is I'm gonna start first to try to drive him flat. If I can't drive him flat, he's a strong guy, he stays on his elbow, I'm gonna start punching. So I control his wrist with one arm, and I start throwing hooks with my left arm. He eventually has to pull his arm out. He will do that eventually. From here, I'm gonna take a claw. So how can I submit a guy from here? Well, I have to get to his back, so I'm gonna use his claw grip, and I'm gonna reach right around his far trap muscle. From here, because the wall is in the way and it's a bit of a nuisance, I'm gonna use my knee to drive into his lower back. And then from here, if I can transfer this foot over, I will. To the far side and watch how I sit to my butt by sitting directly in front of me. Now it's the choice is mine, seriously. I can pull my left arm out and go over the shoulder, or I can keep double underhooks and fall to the side. Either either one works. So I can sit up, switch my arm over the top, and sit to one side here and here, and then start looking for the rear strangle. That's one option. Or I can elect to stay double underhooks here, where I have a claw and an underhook on one side. And then I can connect my hands or go double wrist, fall off to one side. And the thing about this is it's great for controlling guys. It's a very controlling position. And I can elect to pull my right arm out here, look to fence the top arm over as a strangle arm and start trapping arms as well, where I can trap arms, trap hands and look for the strangle. So th there's lots of nuance uh, in there as well. If you know how to do the straight jacket system, that'll make sense to you. I can't spend the whole video going over that because it'll be a little bit too much. It'll be too many techniques jammed into one. But the concept should be, if I have an inside wrist position and I manage to clear the top leg at the very least, and I have the arm pinned, which I've shown this in many, many videos, especially my older videos, I keep my hips heavy and I start punching, pushing off my left leg, throwing hooks. As he starts to block, there's always gonna be an opportunity to go to a far claw. Okay, I can go to a half claw too. If, if it shins down and I can't get to the far shoulder, I can take a half claw. I can even use a near side shoulder grip. So that works just as well, okay? I prefer the claw, but if, if he's really defending and I can't get to the far, the far shoulder, just take the near side shoulder. Okay, now the trick is I wanna get my knee positioned right behind his lower back and I don't wanna to fall to my side. I wanna actually sit up and use the wall to support me, just like this, that's my goal. And from here, once again, you can either switch up over the top, choose a side, fall off to your side, let's slide over a little bit. Once again, I can punch this arm out from this half claw and go over the shoulder and then fall off. See where I fall off? Boom, and I can start to attack the back from here, go to my post rear mount or to my, my, uh, my body triangle. Or from this half claw, I can now connect my hands here and here fall off to one side. Body triangle is optimal, but if I can't get that, I'll take the poster rim out. Now, I also want you to pay attention to my feet. At the very least, I need to make sure that I get my left foot high on the hip. So keep this leg bent, his right leg, but like frame it up. Yeah, that, that's where he's gonna be. So I have to be at least here, at the very least. And when I elect to fall over to my underarm side, I have to make sure that my head is under Tony's head. I can't allow his head to get underneath mine because now I'm at the risk of losing connectivity to his back. He can start to move within my legs. So I keep my head pinned under his. And then from here, like I said earlier, I can start to extend limbs, trap arms, and look for the strangles that we always go for. Okay, so it's a really great question. No one's ever asked me that. How do I submit guys from the, um, the Dagestani handcuffs? Well, first, don't think about the submission. Think about 
How can a controlling pinning position like the Dagestani handcuffs bleed into a transition that can lead to a submission? So the, the transition would be from the two-on-one inside wrist rod to a claw or any form of the claw. It could be a full-on claw, it could be a half claw, and then we use that to transition to the back. As soon as we make that transition, then the neck will become available. I personally stick to strangles against the cage. I wouldn't look for arm bars and things like that. You're not gonna have enough space to extend. Remember, with arm bars, you need extension. So if my back is on the wall and I lock up an arm bar from the back, a lot of guys make this mistake. I try to extend my body, but because the cage is there, I can never get the proper extension. So this is a big de detail. If you're against the cage, with your back on the cage, looking for, the, uh, looking for back control, always go for the strangle. It's always gonna be easier. So let me give you another submission. This is a little bit more straightforward if I have the guy pinned and I have an inside wrist position. This time I step over. We, we try to get our head on the inside like that. Again, I'll, I'll link my videos above. I start landing punches. He's gonna block his face. This is very, very common. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start to draw his shoulder to the mat. So I want, in this case, Tony's shoulder to pass the lining of his elbow. As I do that, watch how my left knee slides to the center and I figure for my legs. From here, my goal is to pry his hand out from underneath his belly. So my goal should be to go two on one, peel. As soon as I peel, my goal is always to put his knuckles on his back. So if his hand is in front of his stomach, and you've heard my professor talk about this in his DVDs, if, you, if, you, uh, if you've ever seen his, his Kimura series or anything like that, when the belly is in front, of, uh, the hand is inside of the belly, in front of the belly, that's a controlling position. We're focused on control. Whenever we can get it behind his back, we're always focused on breaking. So that's the distinction that we make when, when it, going for any kind of Kimura. So as soon as I get his arm behind his back, I like to make a switch off where my left hand, the cross hand grabs the wrist. And then from here, I take a baseball back grip and I start to drive his thumb high on his back until the arm snaps. Very easy snap. And there's a few other grips that I like to use that are also very brutal that we can get into. Very painful movement. So, once again, I have my inside wrist position. I have a head, uh, an arm pin. And we like to get here because now I have unobstructed shots to the head. As I step over, I lock his leg up in position. If his leg is framed like this and I'm not able to, uh, to get my knee to the ground, focus on driving forward first. Not only does that elongate his, his upper body, but it also elongates his leg to a certain degree. Then I back heel like this, see? and then I sit down on his hip. You can still land a few shots. Really, it's gonna be a much better movement and the easier thing to hit when he starts going belly down. So the, the more he goes belly down, the easier it is to pry his hand out because there's less weight on his hand. So land shots, force him to kind of hide, yeah, in this position. Then I'm gonna go two on one. I'm gonna put pressure on his kidneys. I'm gonna pull his wrist out. From this position, I lock up on the wrist and I go baseball back grip. I can start to work his hand up. If he's very, very flexible, I'll, I'll show you exactly what I do. I put my hand on his tricep, I lean my shoulder forward, and then from here, when he goes to free up his arm, go ahead, he can't because my shoulder's now blocking his, his arm in place. I can get a one-arm Kimura by driving up like this. So one last time, we'll go right from here. So I'm driving forward, I land some shots, he starts turning, I go two on one. As long as I can get his knuckles behind his back, I can start to go for the break. So once I get his knuckles behind his back, I make a switch off here and here. If I want, I could just simply drive up and get a break. If you want a stronger connection, we drive our shoulder behind his wrist. Now, as I start to drive up with a single arm, I can easily snap the arm. And what's good about this is this is an easy transition to the back. So even if I lose the arm here and here, I'm in a position where I can start to look for my finishes from the rear mount when the guy's pinned. Thank you guys for the continued support. Make sure you guys subscribe. Check out the Patreon. I have it linked in the first comment I know. below. Tim, it's also in the description. Door Mats and I appreciate the continued support month after month on the Patreon. And yeah, those are two options that you have. They're not the most. I mean, the back take is high percentage. The Kimura is a little bit more low percentage, but it's about causing some sort of dilemma for your opponent. Make them worry about the strikes. Make them turtle up and go belly down. When a guy's getting smashed in his head and he's trying to protect his head, a lot of times he's forgetting about his his arms. He's not worried about the Kimura. And then from there, you can start to sneak on your Kimura and go for the finish. All right, make sure you guys subscribe. I appreciate the support. Thank you. We interrupt this program for a special news bullet. Gentlemen, I'm just going to shoot a video. Sorry, sir. No worries.
Yo, Ronnie, you scrape his belt as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can some of you know the rest of the hash brown? Where do you want me to go, Steve? Oh, you can stand aside. I'll call you over. Is it good? Yeah.